today we're at Stern Point, a peninsula in the East Riding of Yorkshire. I'm here today with Harry. I'm going to go look at the two lighthouses and the military installations that are left behind from the First World War and the Second World War. This is the start of, I believe it's a mile and a half across. Is that right? They don't like dogs. They don't like people dropping things, tents, fires, touching flowers, caravans or buses. So if you don't do any of those, you're allowed and you're not allowed to park here overnight. And that is Yorkshire Wildlife Trust's Unimog. Good bit of kit. Shout out to Eddie Woody, he likes working on Unimogs. The flower touching enthusiasts will be disappointed. Apparently there's something on the flowers down here that looks like spider's webs or like fluff that's come off sheep, but apparently it's something else and it can be quite nasty. Yeah, I believe it's a uh, caterpillar or something. Ah. No, it's very poisonous caterpillars. Poisonous caterpillars. What, like get it on your fingers, then lick your fingers, and then you get poisoned? Along that line, sure. Yeah. Not so good then. Not finger licking good. I'm actually just walking on sheet ice now. We're walking on the military road. It is the concrete sectional road that the military used to install. This probably dates back to the 1940s when the garrison here was bolstered up and the World War I emplacements were upgraded to the standards of the World War II War Ministry design. Now, I visited here before with Dave a couple of years ago now, probably three years ago, and the gun emplacements were completely buried and left behind. But Harry, the sandwich eating Harry, mm. tells me that the gun emplacements are all cleared. Not restored, but cleared of all the debris so they can be made out easier. They do look very good now. They look very good now, so let's go check those out in a bit. As we're now getting on to, this is the beginning of the peninsula. The tide, we're at about slack high at the minute, but it's, uh, the tide's gonna start making its way out. The peninsula curves here, the actual end is over there. If you can make that out viewers. There's two lighthouses on Spurn Peninsula, Spurn Point, and they're over there. As we see the start of the sand and the sea. Just coming into view now on the floor there. That is a mountain for a Vickers anti aircraft gun. Just as Harry's walking past. That's what that was. Right there. You can see the lighthouses a bit more clearly now in the distance. And this is where the road's broken up. And the long walk on the sand for us now. The dynamic natural processes that created Spurn are still changing the landscape today. In December 2013, Spurn became an island as a huge tidal set flooded large areas of the nature reserve and washed through the narrowest part of the peninsula seen here. The road that used to lead to the point was completely destroyed. Yeah? Yeah, I think the light isn't as harsh as I thought it was. No.
looking at these tyre tracks even Land Rovers will struggle in this it's a very deep sand's so soft the tyre's not long gone out That, viewers, is the remains of the temporary road that was put in to try and keep the roadway serviceable but the power of the sea itself has simply washed it all away. So viewers, behind Harry, that's where we've come from, that is looking north, and then looking this way, is where the beach ends, and we get back onto the concrete road, and there's a railway here, it was a wind powered railway, I believe they did have a locomotive at one point, but for the majority of it, was wind powered, and that was just a local railway, that was not connected to the main line. That will start again up here. You can even see where that is the bottom of a Land Rover that's bottomed out. Right there, because it gets so sandy. You really want to be in locked dip, low range to get up there, because that is so, so it's like flour, trying to drive in flour. And all these vehicular movements, vehicular movements are from today because this would have been underwater only two hours ago. The sea would have been right up to there. As we can now see here, broken up concrete, and there is an old pillbox that's all broken up. Sorry, I'm filming into the sun. But you can see how cold it is because the sand has started to frost up again. Now the sea's gone. And now we're back on firm ground. We're just coming up to one of the high tide shelters for people who've got stuck out here at Spam Point so they can shelter in there and just get out the wind it shelters people from nature itself that's what that's for Yorkshire Wildlife Trust built that we will see some standard gauge railway soon here we are viewers this is the start of what is left of the railway that used to go all the way to where we started right over there but now this is the beginning all the rest has been washed away and it's now under the mud as the changing tides move the sand around here it's fair point So viewers are a little further along now. Got some works going on. I think that's like a pile driver machine on the back of the trailer there and the digger. Not quite sure what he's doing. 
then we've got one of the first lighthouses up ahead I believe Yorkshire Wildlife Trust bought that in 1988 and they've restored it because it's not in use anymore it's just a monument to Span Point yeah I believe that viewers unless I'm mistaken is a tank trap right there and then there's a couple of pillboxes I'm sure someone will be able to correct me in the comments my misinformed judgment and these look like yeah these anti-tank blocks is that what these are because they're not pillboxes they're anti-tank blocks so these are to stop inversion yeah so that they put a barrier in here to block it off and these are anti-tank blocks it's anti-inversion defences is it? yeah oh, cool. anti these are anti-tank blocks they used to have an insert they could drop in these are modern the back baskets on top not quite sure what they're about modern art they? modern art yeah, yeah. Well, I see now yeah are they in a line? Yeah, because there's like some concrete blocks there. Yeah. It comes across a bit like that. Film it. Just, uh, oh, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah. To stop this part being inverted. Yeah, it's very cool. Very cool indeed. So we've got one, two three and this was like a central barrier section and then four and then an anti-tank ditch there so definitely to slow the advancement of enemy troops if I'm not mistaken viewers I think this is where there used to be some houses just on the edge there was a row of terraced houses just along here I'll see if I can find a photograph from yesteryear of said houses we just look around here there's a large fire over there we haven't worked out what's actually on fire yet we'll make our way towards it and that is one of the old white houses right in the center of the screen now then off to the right in the center of the screen now is a RNLI lifeboat Hopefully we won't be needing that today. It's quite a lot of smoke that Harry. So the fire, the fire's over there. And the smoke trail runs almost along the peninsula going that way. It's quite intriguing because this is a nature reserve and large fires in nature reserves don't usually go hand in hand. No matter we can see where the sun's got to. It's melted this bit, but not that bit yet. And this is the more modern lighthouse of the two. Just to our left and behind us used to be a large observation post. All in there. We'll check that out in a bit. On our way back. In 1895, this round brick tower, standing at 39 metres high, was designed by Thomas Matthews, the architect. Originally running on oil to create the light, electrification came in 1941, and the lighthouse was fully automated in 1957. Due to improvements in navigation, the light was discontinued in 1985. The Yorkshire Wildlife Trust have actually restored this lighthouse to its former magnificence. As you can see, inside it's got large cutouts for hoisting things up, but it's got new windows. The coat of arms has been repainted at some point. As we look up at the brick structure, very, very interesting and very photogenic. So viewers, after talking to the lovely people at the Yorkshire Wildlife Trust down at Spurn, 
they tell us that they're removing large colonies of sea buckthorn. It's then going to be managed by highland cows, which will be moved into the cleared areas, wearing the latest no-fence technology. Now, the sea buckthorn has taken hold here since the 1950s, and in some areas it's grown to be 30 feet high. They're removing the sea buckthorn in five different areas, a picture on screen now. A benefit for us is that a lot of the military installations down further into the peninsula have been completely cleared and are now accessible. So that is the, the old lighthouse there. That wasn't in use for very long because not long after technology's advanced very quickly and that is the lighthouse that was used for many many years. Yeah, I think they're anti-tank blocks there, blocking the main road. They are, they've got the same uh, slits. Yes, so you could lower a large gate into them. Oh yeah. What does that say then? I wonder if that's been like a welcome gate. Team. I can't read what that says. Sometimes when I'm editing it, it comes out more clearly. But I can't make that out. Yeah, I'm not getting it. No. Wait. And this has had a mast on top by the looks. Probably big lighting. And they look like anti-tank blocks to me. And I don't know if this is the big concrete peninsula where there used to be a row of terraced houses. These are the beginnings of the houses. I think these are owned by the RNLI for the staff that work and live down here. Don't know if you can hire one out. That'd be quite cool. Stay down on Spurn Point in a house. Busy place. Very busy place. Have a little look in this gun store. This might be the sausage roll stop that I need as well. Getting a bit peckish. That's those houses. There have been a lot of buildings on here. So, there they are, nice lovely terraced houses. And this was all just army barracks. Some of the barrack blocks are still there. And that's the gun battery that we're going to go look at. And that's the gun. 9.2 inch gun, that's a big gun. Wow. Yeah, I reckon that went with a bit of a pop when they uh, fired it. Looks like a little pop. Like a spud gun. I bet there's very, very little footage of that firing, if any. We've done well getting that photograph. Yeah. 
very, very cool indeed. Now we can see behind it the render that's had the blue. This is the concrete render they stereotypically used in military buildings. But apart from the gun battery, I can't see anything on there that... I mean, is this building on that photograph? Or are we a little further back? I think this building is... I don't know now. No, I don't. I don't know if we're that far in yet. That, yeah, I remember that from last time. I don't know if that's out there. It's like we've got a pillbox. Pillbox and pillbox, yeah. Yeah. Pillbox and pillbox there. Yeah, that's where There's a wall. But I can't recognise anything from it. Oh no, that's the anti tank box, isn't it? Near the gates. Right. But we're surely not all the way up here. Because. Oh. We might be. So we're quite close to the jetty. We're actually quite a bit further in. I wonder if we're like here, somewhere here. Sausage roll time. So this is the main fort area now viewers. These are the humble lifeboat houses. They look very nice. But as you'll see, when we're at a better angle, they don't have tiled roofs because the roofs are just blow away. So these are the garrison buildings. That one's reused for the Yorks Wildlife Trust. I think me and Dave went in there last time. I think we go in there. Toilets are open. All oh, right. Interesting. So they are the old Mastec buildings for the fort here been such a long time since I've been here last. I'm sure there's like military buildings just here. Straight into like bunkers and things. It was all still quite buried out here. Yeah, this was totally buried when I came here last. Well, I think here there was a garage, yeah. It's like, uh, you see the ramps? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and there's a tar, is it tar floor? Yeah, they used to just put yeah, big tar floor down. All around there, so I think this was like a maintenance. Oh, wow, yeah. I don't think we saw this last time. So that is a ramp to put a military vehicle on of some sort and get underneath it and work on it. Interesting. So that is VTS Humber. I'm told that building's totally empty and it's all remotely controlled. See the layout of where a building used to be. That's totally dug out up there. Yeah. Up ahead there, that was that one open like that last time. This was all buried. Yeah, here. Oh yeah. Well, that looks like a roof, not a floor, but I could be wrong. I'll tell you what that is. That's where they've had wood lats going across then the parquet floor above. Very military. And that's actually ice on top. <laughs> be a bit slippery. Really? Yeah, you probably won't be able to on the camera. Yeah. I, I can see it very well. <laughs> And that sold for £500,000 recently. So, viewers, we're going towards 
little ops room by the looks could be wrong correct me if you know otherwise no smoking sign and there's racking outside but I don't know what for if you know please leave a comment as we move in to right this I think this was a magazine because it's got the vented bricks and it's quite short this is a magazine so this would have been a storage locker for the gun battery that we're going to go look at soon wow and there's been racking in here wonder if this is where they prepared something it's had ventilation but it's never had electric lighting by the looks everything's painted white Corner. What do you think this was for then, Harry? That's a big bullet. Yeah, the big rounds for the coastal artillery guns. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's been stainless in here. That's why it's all been cut out. There's been something embedded into the floor. Because when they've poured the floor screen, it's left the lines behind. Still works very rotten now. You can see there where there's been a vent. Then those posts from the floor, they've gone full height because they've gone into the ceiling as well. So they've been full height. Now I wonder if they stored the cordite charges in here and then they stored the rounds in there, which is a bit crazy because they used to keep them separate. But this room looks like it's been for a completely different purpose. And it's got the oddly shaped windows that have been sealed up. And I don't know why they've done that. Now this, I believe, was completely buried last time I came here. I've never been in this room. Interesting. So viewers, we're going to go look at a gun battery that Dave and I looked at a good while back, a few years ago, and it was overgrown, full of rubble, and just generally in a mess. But I'm told by Harry that it's been completely cleared. And there's a lot of clearance work going on now. This is a Yorkshire tree surgery pickup truck. We can hear a lot of activity over there. Uh, I think there were three guns. We had the big one that. Yeah. There were two small ones either side there. Yeah. Well, that wasn't open last time either. Another magazine. Another magazine. So I've not been in these, these were completely buried. That must be why they're in such good condition. Ah, the racking's still in this one. So I've got... What's it all about? What's it for? Why have they got the waist height area? I don't know why they do that. It seems bizarre that these. I mean, they're like templates. They, yeah, they look like templates to make new ones to restore it, which is lovely. But I think it just leaves us with more questions than answers. It does, yeah. <laughs> it really, really does. What do you think, viewers? Please leave a comment if you've got any ideas why there would be a waist height brick built structure with steel strapping, then going round to where there's uprights. I can only think this is for used shells or the silk bags for the cordite charges, and then through here was for the solid rounds, the brass rounds. 
that were fired by the guns here at Spurn Fort. They're in really good condition simply because the weather itself sealed off these areas. Back out to the ice. It's about one degree today. It was minus four last night. So, it's a bit chilly. And we're both feeling it, aren't we, Harry? Not too bad. Yeah? Harry's younger than me. Thick blood, you see. Yeah. <laughs> Viewers, it's come to that stage in the video where it's time to say goodbye for this week. Make sure you subscribe to the channel by pressing the circle on screen because next week we're going to be exploring these preserved and recently cleared by volunteers gun pits. This one, you can see the gun pintle and the mountain and the rails where it traversed. And we're also going to be checking out a previously buried generator room and searchlight positions, the VTS tower and the port war signalling station. So come back next week, make sure you're receiving notifications by clicking the bell and setting it to all. And I'll see you next Thursday at 4pm UK time. Bye bye for now.